Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It's beautiful 22nd of November 2022. Come at the podcast. More follow ups and, you know, F ups. Yeah, big, uh, big crisis there at the trucker convoy briefings and more stuff with China. All that more coming up on the show. Please stick around. Oh, and a listener and viewer discretion is advised, ladies and gentlemen. I tend to swear and smoke cigarettes. Stay tuned. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast, a Canadian veteran's point of view on political, social, economic issues, and life. He is Krusty. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, episode 194 of the Chris Camp Podcast. More follow-ups and fuck-ups, pardon my swearing, but too bloody bad. If you like to hear uh, what I'm saying, whatever, you don't have to watch my show. That's the joy about being a Canadian living in Canada. You can say what you want, sort of. Anyhow, as I carry on yesterday, uh, I put the episode up 193 in regards to uh, the influence that China has had on our resources and our politicians. And there's more information coming there too. I'll have links in my description, but based on what I read, this is just off the top of my head. Uh, it's, it's all garbage. Ladies and gentlemen, it's all garbage because we have elected officials that constantly want to sit there and talk about division and talk about unity and democracy. And with what's going on right now in the mainstream media, especially with the truckers convoy, especially with China's influence, and, you know, Team Canada is in the World Cup finally. Thank you very much. That's great. Good to see that our soccer team is getting ahead. But there is more at stake here at home. Okay. Now, uh, via my chores, via everything I've been doing today, running errands for my wife and looking after our dogs and trying to get stuff ready for my work schedule for tomorrow. Okay. Uh, I've been back and forth on Twitter. And there's a lot of politicians weighing in. On, on on more of these uh, conspiracies they talk about, more and more of the lies and allegations. Now, like I said yesterday, CSIS is saying that now they're backing up the Emergency Measure Act because they thought it was necessary. And yet they told the prime minister back in January that if you push, push this forward, you're going to have a lot of resentment. So which is it? You're saying that uh, the whole thing was validated. You're saying the whole thing was allowed. You're saying it's, it's a good thing. What is it? You know, you're supposed to be the intelligence gatherers of this country. You know, you're supposed to be in charge of looking after possible threats, finding out if, if there's good people or bad people looking after this democracy or want to hurt this democracy. But now, as as the campaign and as this symposium, this hearing is starting to wind down by the end of the week, we've heard Mark Mendocino try to justify his actions. We've heard Mr. Uh, Minister LeBlanc justify his actions, right? So what's in store for us tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen? You know, apparently there's all these emails that have come and gone. People knew about it. And the defense attorney that's representing the truckers, he was asked to leave. Now he's coming back. So which is it? Somebody's getting scared. Somebody doesn't like what's going on. Someone doesn't like the fact that he's asking too many questions. And, you know, a part of us knew this going into this, this, this hearing. Okay. And what gets me is that they're so bloody worried about saving face when they should be looking after and owning their, their shit, but they're not, are they? Of course not because there's a reputation to uphold. Right? Every one of these politicians has a reputation to uphold. Right, We're doing this for your safety. We're doing this for your security. We stood on guard. And yet the people you pay to stand on guard are told to walk one way and talk another way while you go out your merry way and do whatever the hell you want. Right, But we're not seeing the truth. Okay, We're not seeing the truth. Now, to be honest with you, I could not sit and stand to listen to any more of this liberal garbage. And I'm not saying liberalism, the actual meaning of the word, the liberal politicians that are supposed to represent liberalism in this country. I, I'm not seeing it. There's a lot of non-answers coming out of there. There's a lot of BS coming out of there. Okay. 
there's a lot of garbage that is being presented to the general public submitted for our approval and what is being done. Now, I'll be curious to see next Monday when they've actually ended this conference and to see what their conclusion is going to be. You and I both know there was no need to call the Emergency Measures Act. There was no need for it at all. Okay. Regardless of how you feel about the convoy, how you feel about this and feel about that, any common sense person would know there was no need to flip the switch and to flinch like they did. Okay. There was no need for it. It was nothing like the FLQ crisis. No one was putting bombs in mailboxes. No one was putting pipe bombs under vehicles or in in dwellings or kidnapping politicians. They wanted to talk to people. They wanted an open dialogue, and they never got it, right? So I suggest, ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening or if you're first time listening to this podcast, check out Rebel News, check out True North, check out some of the independent media folk out there that were actually at ground zero and saw the convoy for what it was. A proper get together to talk to the government and saying, hey, we've had enough. And from what I've seen and the, the footage that I've seen and listened to, audio and visual, there was no violence there. There was no need for this this mass flinching that the government promoted. There were a lot of businesses that were ordered to stay closed because of the convoy, not because of COVID, not because of the beer bug or safety, because of the convoy, right? And a lot of those businesses would have been saved if they actually opened up their doors. But of course, the mainstream media wants to turn this turn this into some kind of you know big Nazi uh, get together and some big Nazi rally when you had all walks of life there standing up for what was right and doing what they think was good for the country. You know, freedom. Something that we've all fought for. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And carrying on, ladies and gentlemen, if you like and hear what you see, please click like, subscribe, and hit that little notification bell on the tube and other pages, too. Plast this stuff all over your social media platforms if you can, too. And if you like and hear what you see as well, check me the podcast out on Podbean, uh, Twitter, uh, Rumble, Spotify, Amazon, and Player FM, too. Well, I'm on those platforms as well. Just look for Krusty Canuck and those above mentions, and you'll see my mug or the logo here that you see in the top right-hand corner of your screen. And uh, listen and download at your leisure, ladies and gentlemen. And if you feel like donating, please follow the links in my description. You can donate through uh, Stripe or the Buy Me a Coffee app or PayPal. I think I still have it up. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's it's going to be a, a just off the cuff podcast today. I do have some um, media links I can put in my description for you. I didn't download any videos. I'm just sitting here speaking my mind, looking at the buffoonery of our federal government and the lies. Okay. Uh, CISA has released a Twitter too, in regards to, uh, you know, trying to protect the identity of said person that had a Nazi flag at said uh, convoy. Now we all saw it and the outrage was national, international too, for that matter. One individual had a Nazi flag. Supposedly his name was Brian Cox. He worked for a firm called Enterprise, some kind of public relations firm. And the photograph was taken by a photographer that works freelance He used to work for Prime Minister Paul Martin back in the early 2000s. And then he does freelance work for our beloved Prime Minister Potato, Justin Trudeau. Okay. So there's a little bit of wishy-washy, iffy, iffy, we're not sure, uh, that Mr. Miller presented to the hearing, which he was asked to leave for some reason. Now, the footage I saw, he did not raise a stink, didn't raise a fist, didn't stomp his feet. He complied. And then he was brought back into the uh, the hearing again. So I make a long story short, on the bus, off the bus, on the bus, off the bus. Oh, we don't like this information presented us. Get rid of it kind of thing. So it, obviously there are people trying to protect their asses throughout this convoy for the simple reason that, well, you know, we made a mistake and we're not going to own it, but we're going to try to save face and saying, we're doing it for your safety. Okay. That magical word is safety that keeps ringing around. You know, it's 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 like angels harps, right? Oh, safety. Oh, safety. We're doing this for your safety. Take a deep breath. That's right. Oh, your safety. We're doing this all for you. We love you, Canada. 
Sounds like a bad interpretation of Lola Heatherton from uh, Second City, right? I want to bear your children. <laughs> Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. Sorry about that little spurt there. I was feeling trying to feel a bit comedic there, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, I think, I think you get my point. When, uh, the more and more we, we see these uh, hearings and symposiums and all these get-togethers of all these know-it-alls who know what's best for Canadian security. Yes. Well, they don't. Okay? You, you look at the Liberal Party and what they have funded since the invasion of Ukraine, okay, and prior to the invasion, what they funded. Now, there's still a, a, a question of $205 billion dollars that were not spent on, on the beer bug issue. Okay. There's still a lot of money that was spent, but there's no accountability for it. Okay. There's a clip out there with Mr. Pierre Polyev uh, talking about how a billion dollars was spent on the homeless. And yet there is no homes built. There's no shelters uh, being created, but a billion dollars spent on the homeless. So what did you spend that billion dollars on? Jackets? You know, quiches, what, new new socks, new sandals, what, toothbrushes, what? No one knows, right? No one knows. Not a clue, okay? But <laughs> you all see where I'm getting at here when it comes to all this spending, all these virtues, and all these horn blowers and whistleblowers, okay? I'd like to see a candidate again where when someone makes a mistake, they own it, you know? Like being an adult. Oh, what a novel idea. Ooh, I like that idea. Oh, wow. Who would have thought it? Oh, shit. But we're not. We're not seeing that at all. So I'm um, just, <laughs> oh, when I sit in my house and I watch this, it's like watching a really bad sitcom. You know, they, they try hard, they get the idea, but there's no delivery. The, the timing's way off. The jokes are just a little obscure, right? But they're just rushing these things too i hope the next week that a lot of canadians wake up and see it for what it is it was a con <clears throat> you know <clears throat> i said this before too you don't have to agree with what they did in the convoy you don't have to agree with some of the things they said now there's a handful of people there that had a certain manifest there's a handful of people that were bigots and there were a handful of people that were just assholes but when you look at the majority of the people in that convoy you had sikhs you had asians you had blacks you had white canadians you had Eastern European Canadians and Asian Canadians. You had all walks of life there talking about end these mandates. Stop these fucking mandates. Enough of them already. A year before, you're praising the truckers for making sure all these goods and wares get to the shops, the shops that you allowed to be open, mind you, okay? And then when they get sick of the mandates, your delivery service, they're getting tired of the BS you promote extreme prejudice against them, right? You bit the hand that fed you. You shat where you eat. And <laughs> that's unforgettable. So just as they're promoting this whole uh, pandemic amnesty to forgive and forget and move the hell on, no, not a chance. A lot of Canadians aren't going to forget what happened. But there's a lot of Canadians that are going to remind you Okay, powers that be, that there are a lot of churches that were burnt down. There are a lot of railheads that were damaged and sabotaged. Some were destroyed, some were fixed, some weren't fixed. Okay. A lot of people lost their businesses. A lot of people got fined. A lot of people hit the drugs to deal with the stress. A lot of people committed suicide because of these mandates. A lot of fines were handed out. A lot of tickets were handed out. A lot of violence was given to individuals that refused to get off the skating rink or refused to stop playing hockey. There are some individuals in Quebec where the police stormed into their homes and tried to move people out physically in the name of the pandemic. Right? So when you sit and listen to these hearings, you have time to sit and watch these so-called know-it-alls, these great educated officials, Dictate terms to you. You remember those actions, okay? I've said this before. Yours truly lost a job because I spoke it against the masks. And not one bloody administrator gave me a minute or two 
to plead my case. Okay. So you got a lot of people that are scared. Who rather walk the line than tighten the line. They would rather walk the imaginary line or the status quo just to save their asses. Because they just keep proving they don't give a shit about yours. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you like and hear what you see, please click like, subscribe, share this content all over your social media platforms. Whether you find me on Facebook, YouTube, what have you, uh, Twitter, you know, you can also find me on uh, uh, Instagram, uh, Getter, Podbean, Twitter, Facebook, and Rumble too. So a special thank you once again out there to my new Rumble subscribers. Thank you. I'm seeing numbers go up every other day. A few here. Thank you once. I'll give yourselves a round of applause there. Awesome. You guys rock and roll. I'm really impressed. And I just want to say again, thank you to the comments I received my last video. Thank you, Betty. Thank you to Sanico and others. Well done, please. Um, but if you have a question you don't want to display in public, like I, on the platform here, please send me an email. All my contact information is in my description, all my donation links, and I try to put my sources up there too once I have them. I won't have too many sources today other than the garbage that CTV was putting on. I never watched the CBC. Um, but you know, I don't really watch Global either, too, because of those crazy TikTok so-called reporters who talk about virtue and freedom. Yet they're the furthest thing from anything free on the planet. But to uh, make a long story short, please uh, check out my work, share it all around, and subscribe to the following you see in the red there in the bottom. And we're carrying on again with more of episode 194, follow-ups and fuck-ups. There I said the F-bomb. Ooh, my God. We're seeing a lot of those F-ups, aren't we? We're seeing a lot of it. All right. Not just from our finance minister, Ms. Krista Freeland, Mr. Speaker. We're seeing it from everybody across the floor. Okay. Trying to justify saying that they're defending democracy. And yet with the Chinese influence, as I mentioned yesterday's episode, uh, David, the Menzoid Menzies from Rebel News has put together a great story. Uh, I'll put that link in my description for you too. I didn't queue it up for today. Uh, this podcast is just off the cuff and off the top of my head here. But I'll put that in my description for you too. Or check it out yourself on Rebel News. Uh, he's He's got quite the in-depth in that. It's quite interesting too. And uh, it just, you shake your head thinking, why did this happen? Right? Now, for years, there's been a lot of foreign influence when it comes to certain markets and certain regulations in this country. That I can understand. Okay? I can also understand why people would like to work for a company that's big and global and all this because of money benefits, what have you. But when you look at the amount of money we have left in this country that hasn't been given away or mysteriously disappeared because of, you know, said beer bug or because of inflation. All right. It's people like you and me that get it up the chuff because more taxes, right? At the pumps, the grocery store, everything we buy, right? Everything that we need especially now in this country where winter is just over the hump, right? Things are getting colder, wet. Things are going to break down. People are going to go without because of government spending and great government ideas to take more of your money, okay? Here in Alberta, we have a lot of friction between the NDP and the Conservatives, okay? Right? Motley, Notley crowd, the NDP crowd, Constantly want to worry about healthcare. So that means more money being spent to healthcare. Now, I'm all for what we have as a healthcare system. You know, you fall off your ladder, you go boom, ambulance picks you up, takes you to the hospital, you get a cast, you get x ray, blah, 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 blah. Slam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. You're good to go. Okay. But this past issue with the beer bug has created a lot of voids and a lot of issues, right? A lot of yaysayers and naysayers when it comes to hospital staff. I know some hospital staff, they're good people. A lot of them worked really hard, but then a few also told me personally that it wasn't as bad as they thought as projected. A lot of them prepared for emergencies when there wasn't any. A lot of them had kid on standby, people on standby just in case they got overwhelmed. And some hospitals were overrun, but some weren't. So when you hear all this hype about all these hospitals being overrun, just remember some of the TikTok videos that were on during the first six months of the first waves, Okay. Had all this time to dance and choreograph and put this together. And yet, weren't these hospitals supposed to be overrun? Mm, something to think about, right? 
and I'm, I'm not judging the credibility or the efforts and the integrity of, of anybody who works in the field of medicine. I have more respect for actual practicing doctors who look after your hearts and look after circulation and look after your well-being compared to the administrators that called the shots for all of our provinces and nationally. Okay. Let's also remember too, that a lot of these individuals got paid quite a bit of payola, right? To dictate terms to you and me, where we can move, where we can't move, when to put gloves on, when to put masks on. Okay. Miss Henshaw got fired, but she also got $277,000 in bonuses to make up these rules as we go along. How many other health experts were out there traveling around? How many other administrators and bureaucrats alike were out traveling around? Do as we say, not as we do. Fuck that. Any more mask mandates come down? Fuck that. Any more regulations of where we should walk and what we are allowed to buy? Fuck that. Christmas is around the corner. If I want to buy my wife something nice, am I going to afford it? I bloody well will. And I won't wear a mask in the process. All right. That's what my English friends would say. They would probably say, jog on. All right. So I, I think this country has smartened up to a certain degree that we're not buying any more of the BS. We're not buying any more of the dictatorial powers. Okay. Because when you look at those squirmy little worms sitting there, you know, at the convoy uh, hearing, especially the elected officials that think they know what's best. You know, they know the best of bullshit and they only know how to cover their own asses. Because like I say, they don't give two shits about ours. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you like and hear what you see, please click like, subscribe, click the little bell there on the tube uh, to notify you that when something new has come up or to alert you of something to do with the Krusty Canuck podcast, uh, I'm getting a, a bigger fan base and I'm, I'm very, very grateful for it. Thank you very much. I'm very, very grateful for the new subscribers and wonderful people like you that tune in every time I put an episode up. So once again, please share this content around, comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thumbs up, especially the little thumbs up icon. So click the thumbs up and all that good stuff too. Uh, without trying to sound desperate. And uh, if you like and hear what you see, check me out in Podbean, Rumble, Spotify, Amazon, and Player FM. Just look for the Cresting Neck Podcast, and that logo you see in the right-hand corner of your screen will pop up. You'll see my podcast, too. If you just want the audio, by all means, that's fine, too. If you want to see me uh, you know, live or you want to see me in person uh, or see my ugly mug, you can check me out on YouTube and Rumble. But I need to say you'll see the podcast and all those aforementioned places. So I'm going to carry on again with more follow-ups and fuck-ups. We constantly live in a country full of, <laughs> how do you say, uh, politicians that are a little bit challenged, I say. Yeah. Challenged individuals. But they're a hell of a lot smarter than we think. They're a hell of a lot smarter than they display because they're following one guy. That's a little potato himself. And like I say, we've all seen the footage where Justin was confronted by President Z of the People's Republic of China how he was disappointed over this information that was leaked and disappointed over this. Oh, I'm very disappointed in you. Who cares? Who cares? A lot of Canadians and a lot of people in the world are disappointed with Justin Trudeau. I myself, I'm beyond disappointed. I, I have no time for the man. I don't want any harm to come to his family. I'm not going to pull that stuff that some of... Uh, the uh, woke American friends and my woke Canadian friends to use that term loosely promoted against Donald Trump. I don't want any harm to come to his family, but I would love to see the prime minister humiliated more so than he is now. And I think he knows what he's doing, right? He has handlers. He has peoples that pull his strings and he pulls other strings in parliament too. For the simple fact that the liberal party and the NDP alike want to hold on to their jobs. Really, why else would anybody want to ally with the Trudeau government? Save their jobs. You've heard me ramble on before about Mr. Singh and his a quest against the billionaires, yet he does pretty well himself, right? You forget these career politicians do pretty well for themselves too, okay? If you get into politics because you want to be rich, then you don't want to be a politician. That's just, that's just my logic. 
you know, if you want to get into service like that, you want to represent your writings, doesn't matter what side of the fence you're on. But ask yourself this, have they really represented the general interests of this country, right? They all say they want to put money back in our pockets while they keep taking it. But you got to have a product to sell and the market's got to be there in order to bring money back. And I'll do the math on that. I'll wait. Of course, of course, they want to screw us again. That's 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 what it is, right? That's what it is. They just want to keep screwing us again. So you, my wonderful audience out there, and anyone who's seeing this podcast for the first time, think about this. What are the interests that you have to promote longevity and thrive? We should all thrive in this country. Not every politician is a god, and we have to stop looking at these people as gods because they're not gods. They're just people like you and me, okay? But my uh, my compatriot and fellow patriot there, Mr. Frank Vaughn, made a very, very valid point in his last video that no one's going to come riding in in a white steed to save us. And he's right. In regards of how you feel feel about the opposition or feel about this leader or feel about that guy or that gal or this group or that group, no one's going to come riding in, swinging a sword and saving us from the dragon. We got it to save ourselves from the dragon as villagers we've got to come together with our torches and our pitchforks and our sharp pointy sticks and our hearts and our minds and our souls and our fibers and our integrities and say we've had enough enough that's simple so watch closely on what's going to happen with this truckers convoy uh hearing uh, the poac they call it watch closely what's going to happen watch rebel watch true north watch the independent guys you know tune into the cpac channel don't rely on ctv or cbc to do it for you you know they can't tell what's left or right you know you speak your mind in this country i guess you're far right you walk the emotional line for them you know you walk the line and be happy yeah lord self-explanatory but you, my wonderful audience, you, the viewer, you, the first time viewer, you, the consumer, you, the taxpayer, you, the father, the mother, the lover, the fighter, the farmer, the worker, the proper workers, the workers that get up every day and give a hundred fucking percent because they care about what they're doing. And I'm not going to toot the virtual horn about the workers like these politicians do, because a lot of them, I don't think they've actually had a hard day's labor in their fucking lives, to be honest with you. If they have to work 12 hours or more, oh my God, the benefits. When you and I, we've done 12 hour shifts and more. I've done patrols that were held a lot longer. I've done my part for king and country, but I'll do my part for you and I. This is how I feel. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that has been episode 194 follow ups and fuck ups, just off the cuff, the top of my head. But uh, I think you get the point too. I'm back on my work schedule as of tomorrow again, too. So another 10 day stretch and then four days off. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, You'll see my ugly mug again, advertised for the podcast. And like I say, please share, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comments, all that good stuff. Get the algorithm going again, generate some some info. So more people can see this and you can display this and show this. And more people can start thinking for themselves again, regardless of the political dramas that's being presented to us on a daily, daily basis. Like I said, I've been Krusty Knuck on this beautiful 22nd of November, 2022, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) <laughs> <Excuse me. laughs> I hope nothing but best best things for you is all. Um, what else can I say? Shovel some snow, help your neighbors out, do the best you can to help each other out in these trying times. Buy some extra food if you can afford it. Uh, stock up what you can. Or give a couple extra bags to the food banks if you can. You know, Don't hesitate to give someone a extra, few extra bucks to help them with gasoline. And Christmas is coming, so thank you for your loved ones and thank you the ones less fortunate. And just do what you can to be neighborly and just try our best to be kind, regardless of all the medical, political, social, and, you know, Twitter BS. You know, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next couple of weeks. And uh, like I always say, ladies and gentlemen, humanity merit wins the day. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me!
There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. This has been another episode of the Krusty Canuck podcast. Stay sane and thank you for listening. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck podcast. Well, smack my ass and call me Judy. <laughs>